Well, hi guys, welcome back to Lydia's Pantry. And I'm excited to bring you along today for elk chorizo. As you know, for those of you that follow me, my husband just got a cow elk, and this is from yesterday. I was cutting up the last um, bit to process it and get it in the freezer, and I thought, I'm gonna save out a big roast. This is a four and a half pound rump roast that I'm saving, no fat on it whatsoever, no sinew or gristle or any of that, so it's perfect for grinding. But then you wanna add some fat into it. Um, you don't need a huge amount of fat, but this is just under a four pound uh, pork shoulder roast, and it's got the bone in, so I'll have to cut that out. That's been sitting in the freezer about 20 minutes, so it's nice and cold to grind. I'm gonna get that grinding, and while I'm cutting that off the bone and grinding that, I'll put my elk roast in the freezer so it firms that meat up so it's easier to grind. And then we're gonna get to our spice mixture. And if this inspires you to stay with me for the rest of the recipe, I hope you give me a thumbs up because you love chorizo. And go down in the about section, check out all the links for you. I've got links to Zacon Fresh. I've got uh, a link to my Facebook page, or you can just search Linda's Pantry over on Facebook. I've got a page over there. Um, I've got an Amazon link or two. I'll leave a link to this uh, grinder attachment for the KitchenAid. All right, guys, oh, let's go make some chorizo. I'm so excited. So I've got my pork all cut up in strips. And as you can see, it's gonna go down in the hopper very simply. I put my big 16 cup stainless bowl under here because I know I'm gonna need the room. And you go ahead and turn your KitchenAid on and uh, hopefully it doesn't cause too much noise for you guys. But this attachment, I'm telling you, is probably the best one I've ever bought for this. I use it the most and I absolutely All right. love it. Now it's time for the beautiful elk meat. Look how pretty that red meat is. It's just so lean and delicious. It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to show you the rest of this. So let me get that ground up. Get that grinder going. Push the last bit of the pork through. And here comes the elk. Nice. All right. So I've got the meat all ground up and literally it was seven minutes, I think, from start to finish. So we're going to go ahead and just lightly blend the pork in with the elk. So here's a close-up of our meat. and Isn't that beautiful? I don't know how, how I can explain it any other way. It just, it's a perfect ratio, I think, of fat to lean. So first off, I'm going to start off with... Um, the dry spices, and then I do have some wet ingredients, part of which is ancho chilies that I've rehydrated and blended up, and because I rehydrated them with hot water, that is in the freezer um, cooling down, because I don't want to put hot liquid over this cold meat. So we've got a heaping tablespoon of black pepper, mm -hmm. and remember, this is about eight, a little over eight pounds of meat. And we're gonna do Mexican oregano, and I'm gonna do a nice big palmful. And, oh, you smell it, and it just smells fantastic. Ah, oh, love it. So probably uh, two tablespoons. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get it up there to a quarter cup. How's that? And rub that, get all these oils going. Makes me wanna sneeze. Okay. Now I've got a heaping tablespoon of garlic powder. And this is my homemade garlic powder. So that's all that's in there is garlic. So we've got, we'll do two of those. We love garlic. You can't go wrong with garlic. And this is part of the reason why I add liquid to this recipe because you have so many dried spices and those dried spices need to rehydrate. Now we've got a quarter of a cup. Might as well just go to that of onion powder. Ooh, yummy. We need some cayenne pepper, and we'll just go with a eh, quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon there. And smoked paprika. And smoked paprika, oh, it's so good. It's spicy, but it's um, it, it just lends a fantastic flavor. So we're gonna go with a one quarter cup. Let's go with a half a cup. This is a lot of meat. Heaping half cup. And then I have um, 
salt and pepper. Oh, well, I put the pepper in, but we're going to do an, a pretty hefty tablespoon of salt. This is a large amount of meat season, so you want to make sure you have enough salt to taste. But you don't have to go overboard either. So I'm going to say a tablespoon of salt. And again, we're going to taste this before we're done. I also have a product that I used to sell, Spice Blend. It's a hot chili pepper and garlic blend, and it's very good. I still love these products and use them. Um, they were from Wild Tree. It was just kind of a hard business to stick with and be as busy as I am on YouTube. I don't have time. So that's that. And now we're able to get to the dry ingredient or the wet ingredients. But first, we need cumin. And I've got cumin powder. If I was using seed and going to grind it myself in a mortar and pestle, I would um, go ahead and wake it up on the stove in a skillet first. So basically you've got your pile of herbs right there. Okay, now we need our wet ingredients. And our wet ingredients are going to be the chilies and you need some acidity in here. So the chilies, the ancho chilies and red wine vinegar. So let's get our and chilies out of the freezer. A full cup of rehydrated ancho chilies. And then we're going to come over here and we need a cup of red wine vinegar. And I've got the slow boat to China here. Should have taken that it cap off. It should have that deep red coloring when we're done because of all this paprika and spices that are in see. here. So let's get a patty made. Want you? So I've got my chorizo patty in here frying up and the house is filling up with the aromas of a good chorizo. And this is going to be so good in so many dishes. And if you'd like me to bring you along for some recipes, go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section because I'd be happy to. I make a couple of really fun and delicious recipes that are easy and they bring your chorizo to a new level. So, ooh, yum. Okay, so here is the sausage patty. And I want to show you the consistency inside. Hope you can see that good. Anyways, and then I'll taste it for you I and... I do sausages just so I can do this part. Mmm. <laughs> wow. I get that Mexican oregano, the brightness from the vinegar, the garlic, yum, and the chilies are fantastic. It could actually use a little more heat. I think I'm going to throw in another teaspoon of cayenne. Mmm, oh my gosh, that's delicious. And some red pepper flakes. And probably about mm, two teaspoons of those. And then I'm going to leave it alone because that's all that's really lacking is heat. Because the ancho chilies are a little on the sweet side. They, they don't really have a lot of heat. They just got that punch full of flavor. And I can taste that smoked paprika too. Mm, unreal. Guys, I hope it inspires you to make your own chorizo because it's not that hard. It's just putting together a plethora of herbs and spices that you can make something just come alive. And so I'm going to cover this with saran wrap after I add those two things and um, get it in the refrigerator until tomorrow and then I'll package it up and it'll all be heavily seasoned by then. All the spices will have married and it'll be ready to go. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe that I hope and I hope I inspire you to come back. And if you're not a subscriber, hit subscribe. Go over and check out all my links that I've left for you and say hi on Facebook. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. Oh.